Okay, uh, so in this video we're going to start uh, section 11.2, um, which is the addition rule and the complement rule. Um, so a definition there, it says it's sometimes helpful to visualize a Venn diagram when working with probability. Uh, of course, we've worked with Venn diagrams before, so I've, I've just kind of taken the same definition and applied it to this chapter. A uh, Venn diagram is a picture that illustrates the relationship between one or more events in the sample space. Um, now, previously when we were talking about Venn diagrams, I was using the term universal set. Um, in probability, we use the term sample space. Okay, um, The rectangle rep represents the sample space and each circle represents an event. Um, let S denote the sample space of a probability experiment and let A denote an event. Then the complement of A, which is denoted, denoted by A complement, so A with a uh, dash by it, uh, is the set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not in A. Of course, we've worked with complements before uh, in Chapter 2. Um, so problem 21, shade the region on the Venn diagram that represents the probability of A complement. Okay, so. Um, the probability of A, here's uh, A, and here's the sample space. So anything that's an A complement would be outside of event A, but still part of the sample space. Okay, so here'd be the probability of A complement, and I've got that area shaded there. Okay. Um, as a note, remember the second rule of probability that states that uh, the sum of the probabilities of all the outcomes must equal 1. In a Venn diagram, if we were to shade the uh, entire rectangle, rectangular region, then the probability of the sample space is equal to 1. Okay, and that's, a, that's a rule 2 for probability. Uh, remember, uh, rule 1 was that uh, probability always has to be between 0 and 1. Um, okay, so uh, from that, we have uh, the complement rule, which says that if A represents an event, and uh, A complement represents the complement of A, then the probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. Uh, the 1 comes from the probability that the sample space is equal to 1. Okay, uh, So you're really taking the everything that's in the sample space, removing everything that's in A to get everything that's in A complement. Okay. Um, Problem 22, shade the region on the Venn diagram that on the left that represents the probability of A and B. Then shade the region on the Venn diagram on the right that represents the probability of A or B. Okay, so in chapter 2 we worked with the and and or, which were keywords uh, in set theory. Same, same thing here, that they're, they're keywords in probability. And uh, they basically mean the same thing. So the probability of A and B is where... Um, where A overlaps B. Okay, the probability of A or B, we got everything in A and everything in B and then everything in A and B. Okay. Um, from that, we have the general addition rule, which is something that we've already seen before, again, back in Chapter 2. Um, it says for any two events, A and B, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, so in other words, uh, you're going to subtract, um, well, if, if I take the probability of A plus the probability of B, then I would have counted this overlap twice, and I don't want to be counting things twice. Okay, so I'm going to remove one of those times where I've counted this twice, that way I've only counted the overlap once. Okay, um, so uh, we, call it the, the, uh, we call that the general addition rule. Um, one of the things that we got to make sure that we uh, know it, when we're reading these questions is if we have mutually exclusive events. Okay, uh, it says that if a if events A and B have no outcomes in common or cannot occur simultaneously, then they are said to be mutually exclusive. Or disjoint means mutually exclusive. Also, I'm going to use the term mutually exclusive. Um, a Venn diagram of mutually exclusive events is shown below. Okay, so. Notice that A and B have no elements in common, okay, since there's nothing in the intersection, or they cannot occur simultaneously. So this would be an example of what we mean by mutually exclusive events, okay? Um, the addition rule for mutually exclusive events 
just says that if two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, and that's it. Okay, since uh, the probability of A and B is zero, you're really subtracting zero. Okay, so um, I, I guess, you know, what, one thing to say here is that the, 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 this isn't a new formula, okay? Um, you, you can think of this as the, the general addition rule. It's just a, for a special case when you have mutually exclusive events going on. Um, so uh, if we take a look at problem 23, there it says, let the sample space be the counting numbers 1 through 10. And uh, I've got three events in the sample space, which I'm calling A, B, and C. Okay, part A. What is the probability of A complement? Okay, we're using the complement rule. Um, the probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. Or 1 minus the probability of A would be 6 over 10, because there's 6 things in A, 10 things in the sample space. Uh, or 4 over 10, which reduces to 2 fifths, would be the probability of selecting something that's not in A. Okay. Um, part B, what is the probability of A or B? Okay, so with this one, you want to use the general addition rule. And again, you know, when, whenever the keyword is or, you want to think addition rule. Whenever the keyword is and, you're going to think multiplication rule, which is, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the multiplication rule in the next, next section there. But uh, um, so uh, I've got the, uh, the general addition rule uh, stated here. Okay, and... Uh, so the probability of A is 6 over 10. We just said that. The probability of B would be 5 things in B out of the 10 things in the sample space, so 5 over 10, minus the probability of A and B. Okay, so what are the chances that you select something that is A in both A and B? Uh, 3 over 10. Okay, so there's uh, 2 and uh, 4 and 8 can be seen in A and B. Okay, uh, so 3 over 10, uh, it's going to be 8 over 10, or uh, that reduces to 4 fifths. Part C, are A and B mutually exclusive? No, they're not going to be mutually exclusive since the probability of selecting something that is in A and B is 3 over 10. We need that probability to be 0 for uh, A and B to be um, mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, or D, what is the probability of A or C? Okay, so A or C, well, I'm going to be using the same addition rule. Okay, so the probability of A is 6 over 10. The probability of C will be 3 over 10. Um, minus the probability of A and C. Well, let's see here. So there's nothing in common to both A and C. Okay. Uh, so I'd be subtracting 0, uh, which would give me 9 over 10. Part E, are A and C mutually exclusive? Yeah, they, they are going to be, since the probability of A and C is equal to 0. Okay. Um, problem 24, a golf ball is selected at random from a golf bag. The bag contains nine Titleists, eight max flies, and three top flights. Part A, what is the probability that the golf ball is a max fly or a top flight? Okay, so in, in this section, in, in the next section, we, we need to be looking for keywords like or, and, not, okay, because that, that kind of tells us the rule to, that, that we should use there. Uh, so I would recognize this as an addition rule. And um, so I need to find the probability of selecting a max fly plus the probability of selecting a top flight. Now, um, by the way, I, um, I do have mutually exclusive events going on because I can't select one ball that is a max fly and a top flight at the same time. That's impossible. Okay. Um, so the, they're not actually telling me if I've got mutually exclusive events. That's something that I got to read about and figure out on my own. Um, you know, whether, whether I got mutually exclusive events or, or, or not, okay? Um, so the probability of selecting a max fly would be 8 over, there's 20 golf balls total in the bag, uh, plus so the probability of selecting a top flight would be 3 over 20, okay? So 11 over 20, 
is my answer. Part B, what is the probability that the golf ball is not a top flight? Okay, so the probability of selecting a top flight, but the complement of that uh, means that I want the ball not to be a top flight. Okay, and I, I, I can use the complement rule, which says to take 1 minus the probability of selecting a top flight, or 1 minus uh, 3 over 20 is the probability of selecting a top flight, so that'd be 17 over 20. Okay, and by the way, of, of course for part B, there's there's multiple ways that you can do part B. Okay, one, one is just to go straight to the answer. <laughs> okay, so hey, if, if you know that there's 20 golf balls in the bag and three of them are top flight, and you don't want the ball to, to be a top flight, those 17 are going to be top flight are not going to be top flights. Okay, so 17 over 20, boom, we're done. Okay, um, another way to do this would be to say that if if you want the ball not to be a top flight, then it's going to be a Titleist or a max fly. And so I can really kind of turn it into a, you know, something like part A there. And I'd, of course, the answer would still be the same. Um, problem 25 says that in the game of roulette, a wheel consists of 38 slots numbered 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, etc., all the way up to 36. The odd numbered slots are red and the even numbered slots are black. The numbers 0 and 0, 0 are green. Uh, to play the game, a metal ball is spun around the wheel and is allowed to fall into one of the numbered slots. Okay, so part A says uh, what is the probability that um, the metal ball falls into a green or red slot? Okay, so. Uh, or is the key word there, which means I want to add probability of, of selecting green or probability of selecting a red. Now, uh, I, I, um, I do have mutually exclusive events, since I can't select uh, something that is both green and red at the same time. Um, there is 38 slots total. Okay, two of them are green slots, 0 and 0, 0. And, uh, of course, with 1 through 36, half of them are going to be even, half of them are going to be odd. Um, the, uh, the uh, let's see here, the, uh, the odd slots are red, and, um, and so uh, there's going to be 18 red slots out of the 38 slots. Uh, add these together, so you get 20 over 38, which reduces to 10 over 19 is the answer. Okay, uh, part B says, determine the probability that the metal ball does not fall into a green slot. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, the probability of selecting a green slot, but the complement of that means that I don't want the ball to land in, a, in the, a, a green slot. I can use the complement rule there, which says to take 1 minus the probability of green slot. Uh, two slots are green, right? Zero, is in the, zero and zero, zero. Uh, the 38 slots, so 1 minus 2 over 38 gives me 36 over 38, or 18 over 19 would be uh, the answer. And I guess I'm using fractional. Remember, remember fraction, fractional form or decimal form uh, is, 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 is fine. Be, just be, be sure that you're reading the, the, the problem to know which one they're asking for, okay? Um, but... Uh, Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and uh, stop right here. In, um, in the next video, I should be able to finish up 11.2. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do that in the next one.